Wow, that, uh, that took me back. <laughs> For the adults in there, you can appreciate this. My, I grew up in a little church outside of Warren before I moved to First Baptist, and uh, we used to have Fifth Sunday sing-ins. Anybody, any adults remember what that was? Yeah. So we, uh, we got, had a lot of fun uh, doing that, and we're going to do a little setup here, um, I believe. So just give me just a second. I believe we're going to have a table um, come out here for me. Yeah, I, we got a table I'm going to need, so I'm not sure exactly where that is, but uh, we'll get that. All right, so um, awesome. So today, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the beginning. So where, where is the beginning? What is the beginning? Yeah, the beginning is God, and it is the beginning, right? It's the very first thing, all right? And uh, so um, it's the very first thing. So awesome. So now... In the beginning, we know that in the beginning, God was there, of course, um, so that's cool. Um, but what was, what was the earth like at that point? What was, what was everything like then? It was just darkness. So everything started with what? Darkness, nothingness, all right? It was just darkness, and there was nothingness. And so God said, let there be So from the beginning of time, God has been what? Light. All right? God is light. He brought from nothingness, darkness, just kind of that idea of evil and and all that. God, the first thing he asked for and, and spoke into existence was light. And guess what was cool about God? He spoke it, and what happened? It happened exactly when he said it. That's pretty cool. Can you do that? No, I can't do that either. And so after he said it, after he spoke it into exi- uh, light into existence, what's the next thing he said? It is good. All right. I'll tell you what, I want to explain it this way. All right. So anybody in here like ice cream? I like ice cream. All right. So um, we're going to create a Sunday, an ice cream Sunday. Does that sound good? Anybody? Anybody like that? All right. <laughs> All right, I thought you might like that. So, um, so God, as well, let's talk about uh, create. Let me get a few little things laid out here too. So, uh, so God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. And uh, so He created the world. All right, the whole world. So we're going to create our own creation here. All right, um, with an ice cream sundae. All right. So, what was the next thing He created? Like he separated the water, he created the atmosphere, basically. So he did all of that. All right, awesome. So he spent, and what did he say after he created that? It is, is this looking good so far? Yeah, we like ice cream. That's awesome. All right, so let's just get it all in there. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, what was the next thing he created? Huh? Anybody know? Land. Land in the ocean. All right, so he creates the land in the ocean. I tell you what. Anybody like chocolate syrup? Yeah. <laughs> Think we should put some on here? Yeah. All right. And what did he say next? It is? Good. Looking good so far? Yeah. Awesome. All right. You want more? Okay. It is good. All right. All right. What was the next thing he created? Anybody know? Sun. Moon, star, okay, so he created all that. How about some chocolate chips? Yes. What did he say after he created that? It is? Is it looking good so far? Yeah. Y'all want more? Is it good? All right. All right, let's see. Now, what did he create next? Plants and animals. And, uh... The final thing he created was what? Adam and Eve. Now, like, y'all like sprinkles? Let's just take the lid off. Because he said, after this one, he said, it is very good. All right? Ooh, yeah. All right. So uh, is that looking pretty good so far? Yeah? Mmm, okay. So let's, yummy, yummy. All right. Good. Now, so God created this perfect world, right? Everything was perfect. He said it is very good. And man was the top. It was because he said he created him in, in whose image? 
his own image, all right? And he said it was very good. So God created all this world, and everything was perfect. And because it was perfect, he hung out with Adam and Eve. They got to hang out together in the garden. The Bible talks about how they'd walk through the garden. They'd talk with each other. They could hang out together. So not only did Adam and Eve get to live in this perfect world, they got to hang out with God. That's pretty cool, right? So... It was perfect, kind of like our creation right here is perfect. Now, but something happened. What happened? Right. So God had this one rule, right? He had one little rule about a tree, right? What did he say about that tree? Don't eat the fruit from that tree. Now, some people think it's an apple. We don't know for sure what kind of fruit it was. All we know is it looked really yummy, all right? Kind of like our Sunday here, all right? And so God said, don't eat the fruit, all right? That's easy, right? So what happened? They ate the fruit. So what happened to God's creation? It got messed up. So let's try some mayonnaise. in there uh let's see what about some ketchup all right uh let's go with some uh here's some mustard and oh that's barbecue sauce and uh uh here's some relish so uh so the sin just kept happening right like did people stop sinning with Adam and Eve? No. So, oh, this is really nasty. I can't even open the bag. Ah, my hands are slippery. All right, there we go. So, guess what? People kept on sinning. They kept on sinning. All right? And they sinned. And pretty soon... And then God sent uh, Noah, right? And uh, there was the flood. And uh, did people stop sinning then? No? I don't know if I can open this or not. Ah! So here's some onions. So what has happened to our creation? Is it perfect anymore? It's the sa- and then by the time Jesus came, here's some grass from outside I got. We'll just put that in there. And then here's some dirt. We'll just put that in there. Now, what has happened to our creation? It's messed up, right? It's not perfect. You know what? That is exactly what happened to God's creation. Right? God had a perfect world. God had a perfect world. Everything was perfect. He got to have this special relationship with Adam and Eve. They got to hang out with him. They got to spend time with him. They could actually see him. I can't even imagine how cool that must have been with this relationship they had. But still, they chose to sin and the sin then we just kept sinning and pretty soon God's perfect world became really messed up all right it wasn't perfect anymore and this sin had made this huge separation between God and us and even though God had not done anything wrong you know if I were God I'd been like you know what you guys just you know go on with whatever you're going to do this was your problem but you know what God being God he said you know what I got a plan I've got a plan. And he said, you know what? My plan's not exactly what the world might expect, but but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send a baby. Who is that baby? Jesus. Jesus. He sent Jesus, and Jesus came, and he lived a perfect life. All right? He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't sin. All right? He didn't do these things. And he died on the cross for our sins. It's kind of like this. I want you to imagine for a second, 
like you're, you and your best friend are at school, all right? You're at school. I know you don't want to think about school right now, but you're in school. Just work with me. This is all pretend, so work with me. You're at school, and uh, you're hanging out on the playground, and it's, then the bell rings. It's time to come in from recess, and you go into the restroom, and you pull out a Sharpie marker, and you start writing on the walls, and you're drawing pictures, and you're doing all this kind of stuff, and you're saying, I don't like my principal, and my teacher is mean. I don't like her, and you're, you're doing all this kind of stuff, and you're writing, and your friend is there with you, and they're saying to you, stop, don't do that, you're going to get in trouble. And you're like, no, 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 I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm just going to keep doing it. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I'm going to keep doing it, all right? And you're writing and you're writing and you just cover the whole wall and your friend the whole time is saying, don't do that, don't do that. You need to stop. This is not right. And you just keep going. And about that time, the principal walks in. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to be in big trouble, all right? So your principal starts telling you all the punishment you're going to get, you know, and, and you're like crying and snot's running out of your nose and it's gross. And you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I wish I would have done this. This was a bad choice. I shouldn't have done it. And your principal's like, it's too bad for you. You're going to get this punishment. And you're about to be taken away. And about the time you're about to go out, your friend says, wait, stop. I'll take your punishment. Would that be a pretty good friend? Now, in our pretend story, who deserved to be punished? We did, right? Ourselves. And who took it? Our friend. Guys, that's exactly what Jesus did. He took the punishment that we deserved. So what Jesus did... Even though we sinned and we messed up his creation, he basically said, Oh, a rock. Mm. Mm. Really crunchy. The soil around here has a lot of rocks in it. Onion and ice cream don't taste good together either. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. That's really gross. I don't recommend it. But guys, sin is disgusting. Sin is disgusting. And even though Jesus didn't do it, he took it all for us. All right? He did that for me. He did that for you. He didn't do it because he had to. He did it because he loves you. He did it because he has a plan for you. And he did it because he wants to spend a life eternally, forever, with you. Guys, that is amazing. The same God who created this whole world wants a relationship with you. But he doesn't force you to have it. You have to choose. This week, I want you to really think about that and where you are with your life. Are you living a life separated from God where you want to do it your own way? Or are you living a life where you've given your life to him and made him the boss and said, I don't want to do it my way anymore. I want to do it your way. Guys, it's up to you to choose. My prayer for you is that you will choose to go with the light, that you will choose to give your life to Jesus and ask him to take away all that ugly, nasty sin and make you once again perfect so that you can live forever with him. Not because of what you have done or haven't done, but because of what he has done for you. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for this day. God, I thank you for these boys and girls that are here. God, I just pray that you would just open their hearts to your gospel, God, that they would finally understand just how terrible sin is, how that sin separates us from from you and God how there's absolutely no way that we can get to you and have a relationship with you unless we come through Jesus and he takes away that sin father I just pray for those who have never made that decision God today I know that the easy way is to say no 
But the brave and the hard way is to say yes. But God, we also know that that's the best way, God. And I just pray right now that these kids would be brave, that they would be bold, and that they would come forward and they would talk to someone today. Even as we walk out of this room, talk to somebody who brought them. Come talk to me, one of the staffers here, God, that they would talk to them and make that decision to give their life to you, God. We just know you've got a great plan for their life. And God, we just give this time to you, God. It's yours. Uh, Do with what you will, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen.